With the flags of 15 nations flying, this was for 16 years the Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers Europe, known as SHAPE, at Roquencourt near Paris. But it's there no longer. General de Gaulle withdrew from the unified command and gave NATO a year's notice to move its military establishments out of France. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization decided there was no point in leaving behind their political headquarters in Paris itself. So the Council of Ministers, which met here, faced the problems of where NATO should go and how the biggest military move in peacetime could be done within the time limit. They chose to go to Belgium, and the site for the new military supreme headquarters was found just north of Mons on the Brussels Road at a hamlet called Casteaux. This is a countryside of memories. Around in Flanders fields lie one million men, their graves a perpetual reminder of the price of war. On an old airfield, America's General Lemnitzer, the Supreme Allied Commander Europe, unveils the foundation stone of the new headquarters. And so the work began. Six months to erect new buildings, ready enough for the changeover to be made without a break. 1,500 men were brought in to do the job, directed by a consortium of NATO, the Belgian government, and private contractors. Back at shape, the removal began as soon as the first of the new quarters became available. Moving a house or a military headquarters, the principle is the same. First, choose your removers. NATO chose the Belgians. Then decide the order in which things are to go and what you're going to leave behind. Plenty had to be left behind. 46 airfields and nine naval bases, for instance, to say nothing of three underground war headquarters. But everything that could be moved went into the removal vans, including some unexpected equipment. Supreme Headquarters Military Workshop, run by Britain's Remy, packed up and went. NATO had invested about 1,250 million pounds in France, but there was no compensation for installations left behind, except the NATO political building in Paris. NATO had to pay its own removal expenses. Office furniture and files gradually disappeared, but the work of Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers Europe went on just the same. There are some situations in which all you can do is to improvise. It wasn't so easy to move the families of people who work at Supreme Headquarters. Many have lived in the specially built village nearby. Houses are short in the Mons area, though over 2,000 are to be built there. Meanwhile, this Turkish officer, like many others, has to leave his family behind, at least until the new international school is built near the new headquarters. Off he goes to Casto, on the road over which furniture vans, stores and equipment have been travelling for weeks. And as more leave shape, the stage is being set for the last act, the official closing of the old headquarters. Just a year has passed since the notice to quit, and now it's the last ceremonial parade, with the band of Britain's third carboneers playing. <laughs> General Lemnitzer inspects the International Guard of Honor with the French Chief of Staff, General Aileré. General Aileré, who took part in the original planning of shape, is here to give the official French farewell as the flags of the 15 NATO powers are lowered. For 16 years, they have been a symbol here of the alliance which by its very existence has preserved peace in Europe. An alliance which stretches from Norway to Turkey and across the Atlantic to the United States and Canada. After the ceremony, the Supreme Commander says goodbye to French mayors and officials. 20,000 Frenchmen who worked for NATO have lost their jobs.
Next day, 150 miles away, at the new Supreme Headquarters in Belgium, there's the same ceremony in reverse. In six months, there has been a transformation here. Up go the flags of 14 nations, though NATO's own flag has some difficulty in making it. The French tricolour is missing. The flag of Belgium, as the new host country, has pride of place. Belgium's Deputy Prime Minister is here to hand over the site of the new Supreme Headquarters to General Lemnitzer. This now becomes NATO territory. From now on, the headquarters is fully operational. The nerve center of radio and phone links with the various commands and ministries of defense was duplicated here. And the new communications building was completed in 43 days from start to finish. In six months, 35,000 military personnel and 820,000 tons of stocks from 40 depots had been moved from France to other countries. All this without risking security for a moment. For weeks after the opening ceremony at Castaux, the work of settling in went on. It would be some time before all the furniture and equipment, over two million pieces in all, had got to its final destination. It would be even longer before houses, schools and cinemas had been built. The important thing was that the main job went on. In the defence business, you can't afford to stop everything, even to move house. The Deputy Supreme Commander, Britain's General Sir Robert Bray, was soon settled in his new office in the top security building. Further down the corridor, the Chief of Staff, American General T.W. Parker, had his usual conferences with his deputies, German Lieutenant General Graf von Baudissen and Italy's Lieutenant General Antonio Taverna. As still more furniture was unloaded from the vans from Paris, the new Mrs. Mops went into action. Belgians instead of French women. Turf late for the opening ceremony had to be taken up and relayed so that extra drains could be installed. And the barber shop was already open for business. None of the priorities was overlooked. For most of the men working at the new Supreme Headquarters, just as for NATO itself, there are many problems still to be solved. House hunting is something which will have to wait until the houses are there to be hunted. And in the meantime, home for some will be a place on wheels.